for decades now, the science has been screaming at us, warning us, trying to compel us to act. And I just want to underscore that. For it may seem, you know, obvious to you, but it isn't to some. Science is and has long been crystal clear when it comes to climate change. Uh, Al Gore, Tim Wirth, and a group of us organized first hearings in the Senate on this. 1988, we heard Jim Hansen stand in front, sit in front of us and tell us, it's happening now, 1988. So we're not talking about news reports or blog posts or even speeches that some cabinet secretary might give at a think tank. We're talking about a fact-based, evidence-supported, peer-reviewed science. And yet, if you listen to some people in Washington or elsewhere, you'd think there's a question about whether climate change really is a problem or whether we really need to respond to it. So stop for a minute and just think about the basics. When an apple falls from a tree, it will drop toward the ground. We know that because of the basic laws of physics. Science tells us that gravity exists, and no one disputes that. Science also tells us that when the water temperature drops below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, it turns to ice. No one disputes that. So when science tells us that our climate is changing and human beings are largely causing that change, by what right do people stand up and just say, well, I dispute that, or I deny that elementary truth? And yet there are those who do so. Literally a couple of days ago, I read about some state officials who are actually trying to ban the use of the term climate change in public documents because they're not willing to face the facts. Now, folks, we literally do not have the time to waste debating whether we can say climate change. We have to talk about how we solve climate change. Because no matter how much people want to bury their heads in the sand, it will not alter the fact that 97% of peer-reviewed climate studies confirm that climate change is happening and that human activity is largely responsible. I have been involved in public policy debates now for 40 plus years, whatever, since the 1960s. It is rare, 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 I can tell you, after 28 years plus in the Senate, to get a supermajority of studies to agree on anything. But 97% over 20 plus years? That is a dramatic statement of fact that no one of good conscience has a right to ignore. But what's really troubling is that those same scientists are telling us what's going to happen. Not just the fact of it being there, but they're telling us what's coming at us. These scientists also agree that if we continue to march like robots down the path that we're on, the world as we know it will be transformed dramatically for the worse. And, and we, we can, can expect, expect sea levels will continue rising to dangerous levels. We will see nations moved as a consequence in the Pacific and elsewhere. Bangladesh, countries that are low, we will see large swaths of cities and even some countries underwater. We can expect more intense and frequent extreme weather events like hurricanes and typhoons. We can expect disruptions to global agricultural sector that will threaten job security for millions of farmers and undermine food security for millions of families. We can expect prolonged droughts and resource shortages which have the potential to fan the flames of conflict in areas that are already troubled by long-standing political, economic, religious, ideological, sectarian disputes. Imagine when they're complicated by the absence of water and food. These are the consequences of climate change. And this is the magnitude of what we are up against. And measured against the array of global threats that we face today, and there are many, terrorism, extremism, epidemics, poverty, nuclear proliferation, all challenges that respect no borders, climate change belongs on that very same list. 
It is indeed one of the biggest threats facing our planet today. And even uh, top military personnel have designated it as a security threat to not just the United States, but the world. And no one who has truly considered the science, no one who has truly listened objectively to our national security experts could reach a different conclusion. So yes, this is personal to me. But you know what? The bottom line is it ought to be personal to everybody. Every man, woman, child, business person, student, grandparent, wherever we live, whatever our calling, whatever our personal background might be, this issue affects everyone on the planet. 